Hello everyone and welcome to the Nimiton, our Grove of Wisdom. Today I'm going to do a talk on one of the most debated spiritual practices in history, Druidism, or the Druid being the Hierophants of Gaelic society. I'm going to kick things off by saying that this is not an explanation of Neo-Druidism. It's really popular today and I won't be going into detail about the Irish Druids until a later video. With that being said, let's get started. The Druids had an extensive education process built over the course of what most people agree is 20 years. Their ranks were three in number, being the Bard, Ovate, and Druid. Now this emphasis on education can be brought into perspective by Caesar's statements on the Druids, exclaiming that they worshipped Mercury. They didn't actually worship Mercury, but a deity akin to Mercury whose name was not listed by Caesar. Now, this Mercury worship is quite interesting, as it supports respect for intelligence. Mercury, in celestial regards, has an influence over the perceptions. This is further connected in the Thoth-Hermes-Mercury similarities that allude to an overarching god of wisdom and knowledge from antiquity. So let's go ahead and say it's safe to assume that the Druids admired wisdom on a spiritual level. Another factor of the spiritual practice is a reliance on natural divination. Natural divination is an attempt to predict scenarios outcomes through the immediate world. Flocks of birds, notable animals engaging in whatever action the druid deems relevant, spurts of sacrificial blood in some extreme cases, or local fauna all had some special purpose to the observer. The particular teachings of the druids though tend to be the most difficult thing to really pin down due to a mouth-to-ear education process. Thankfully, we can turn to a book called History of Initiation with decipherable initiatic practices in an attempt to discover these beliefs. The initiation of a druid showed a candidate being in the form of a blind man and chaperoned by an informed member. This practice suggests growth and realization for the candidate. Their sight being non-existent is brought forward by the wisdom of the druids, granting them new awareness to the world around them. The candidate proceeds nine times about a cauldron of Ceridwen, then to be bound by oath whose breaking results in the death of the initiate. Afterwards, the now bard is put through a series of perspective changing events by wearing a mask of animals and assuming the actions and personality of those animals. To show the new stature, the initiate received a green emblem as the color of their bardic office. After this still, the druid was struck violently on the forehead and laid low. The druids then communicated secret teachings, followed by a charge to have utmost fortitude. This concludes the first step of a druid's initiatic process, the second of which was into the distant future. The second ritual was encapsulated by taking on the graces of wisdom. Before receiving the blessing, the druid was purified by water and later taught transmigration of the soul. Now really quick, did you notice that the wearing of the animal mass after the symbolic death in the first degree is a representation of this same transmigration? If not, maybe think it over. Now, the young initiate could oversee religious operations and was labeled a minor diviner by the druids. This time, a blue crystal was granted to the learning ovate, the crystal a long time symbol of the mystic to ward aggression and the blue color of the Ovate's office. If you're having trouble seeing the greater purpose of these rituals, remember to attempt to imagine it. Deeper spiritual purpose acts as a pushing agent on the candidate to seek out, know, and be more. Finally, after rigorous learning through life and both initiations passed, a true druid could be made if he was found eligible. In preparation, a candidate was sealed for nine months, dedicated to solitude and learning, now, I want to diverge shortly to say that the number nine normally gets associated with the nine three-dimensional shapes. Now, that's the non-truncated regular shapes, if you're wondering. This emphasis on the number nine, though, suggests an affinity for geometry and celestial study. I digress. So the Druidic initiate underwent the most ancient rite, the process of symbolic rebirth, not just death as in the preceding rites. The druid was cast to sea, assumingly destined to return. The waters are the void of the unliving, and the return to shore, a representation of the druid's new life. 
I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. If you did, please leave a like down below to help me grow the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. If you want to see more of my videos as they come out, feel free to subscribe. Now that's certainly not going to be the last video that I do on the druids. Alright everyone, thanks for tuning in. It's about time I go water my plants.